welcome back to Indie Faith. You're here with Jules and Mary. Hey. Uh, we're on episode 26. And um, how are you, cuz? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. Um, freezing. Oh, it's so cold, yeah. man. It got cold out of nowhere. <laughs> Winter is coming. I know. But I won't say the dude's... Like the degrees, because um, <laughs> our Kiwi brothers and sisters might be like, what a wuss. <laughs> but hey, come here in summer. <laughs> yeah. And then let us know. Yeah. Um, all right. We'll kick it off with Icebreaker. Okay. This one's on me this week. So um, I've just got a series of questions that I'm going to ask you, Kaz, and you okay. can um, answer them honestly. Yeah. Um, you'll be fine. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. Um, all right. I've just lost it. Give me two seconds. <laughs> I'm just staring right at it. I'm just like, it's right in your face. Okay. Um, we'll start off with uh, this one. What is your favorite magical or mythological animal? Ooh, um, phoenix. Okay, why? Um, I I don't know. When I was in my teens, I, <laughs> this is going to sound so lame. Nah, I bet you I know what you're going to say. <laughs> so when I was um, in my teens and, you know, when you're going through, <coughs> you know, shit and yeah. all that and uh, everyone, knows, like I, I mentioned it before, how I was going through like an emo phase. Yeah. Um, so I always pictured like the phoenix to be like, you know, rise from the ashes yeah. and that. And so I was like just waiting for my moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, it, <laughs> I was still waiting for my moment. <laughs> But you know, the rise from the ashes, <laughs> you know, your Facebook statuses and that. <laughs> oh, those cringe ones. Yeah, I know. And then they always have the memories, like Facebook sends you your oh, memories. I hate those. And it's so cringe, like how you used to write or I speak. Know. And you're just like, oh, The yuck. worst is, um, you know, when you are when you have a partner and, you, you know, you guys are so young and all that. <laughs> and then you put up all these, like, song lyrics. <laughs> When you're, those, when you're angry, like, if you can't have me, like if you can't <laughs> deal with me at my worst, you can't have me at my best. How many of you women put up, um, you know, uh, that Beyonce song, put a ring on? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure though, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, so okay. definitely a phoenix. But I, I've always, uh, that's, that one I've always wanted a tattoo of. Oh, man. But now it's like phoenix and dragon. Okay. Yeah. Mad. I think that. That f- I've always wanted, like a you know, a yin yang. Yes, but with the phoenix and the dragon, because yeah. I oh, feel like be yeah, so cool. I just feel like they're just uh, they represent both <laughs> uh, you know opposite yeah. sides of the spectrum. So bad, yeah, bad. okay, cool, thanks, cuz. No, no worries. All right, next one is if you had to delete all but three apps from your smartphone, oh. which would you keep? Oh, which one would I keep? So you have to, so you you can only have three three apps on your iPhone. Um, NetBank. <laughs> 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 um, our Binance, I have uh, that. That was a recent one that I got. Yeah. Um, and calculator. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I'm not that. I'm not good at maths. <laughs> yeah, but what if you need like another app? You could buy an actual calculator. Like, <laughs> true. <laughs> It's on your phone. It's just there. Okay. All yeah. right. No, that's fair. That's oh, fair. actually, no, no. Sorry. I'll remove calculator and I'll put, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Camera. Okay. <laughs> for my kids, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> just to clarify, guys, it's not for the vainness, okay? It's strictly for the children. Yes. <laughs> okay. What fictional family would you be a member of? Oh, fictional <coughs> family. Um, like any, like yeah, or any, like cartoon or any that you you wish you could be a part. Well, mm. If you were a part of a fictional family, like which family member would you be? Um, I don't know. Uh, the the only thing that comes to mind is um, a Fresh Prince because <laughs> <laughs> they're rich. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. What about you? Fictional family? Yeah. Oh, man, that's hard. Um, oh, yeah, it's hard. It is hard. I'm just like, mm, um. I was going to say Cosby, but then I was like, oh, oh this is all Cosby. We all know what happened to him. I'm like, ah, we'll just cut that. And <laughs> I can't think. To be honest, the family I would have wanted to be a part of, um, but it's it's not a great example, is, you know, the the Starks? In um, oh, Game yeah. of Thrones, I would love to have been a Stark. 
the whole family dies. <laughs> That's and then I just while I was thinking about it, I was like, let me think about it again. Um Okay, last question. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Mm. Oh man, I have so many, but nothing comes to mind. That's okay. Um <coughs> Best piece of advice. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> any. I know there's probably heaps and heaps, but anything that you can think of. Yeah. Um, fuck. I don't know why nothing comes to mind at the moment. That's okay. Do you have one? <laughs> oh, yes. Let me think. Okay, all right. I'll go on. Best piece of advice I've been given, and it's actually really, really recent, is to be happy. <laughs> Like wow. actually happy. And even though it's only like two words. Yeah. You know how most people live in a world where, um, you know, they, they, they pretend they're happy. Well, not pretend, but they're so complacent and they're so used to and they're so comfortable with the way things are that they're not 100% happy. Yes. Um, yeah. I've recently learned that, yeah, you actually have to be happy. Yeah. Really, really happy. Like, so. That's a good one. Yeah. I have a lot. Like, I, I've got a lot on my phone. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I'm always bigger than these quotes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't even think of one. That's okay. Um, but a lot of it is, um, you know, uh, um, like, you know, being grateful. All right. Uh, based around being grateful. Mad. Um, and, yeah, like uh, the energy that you put into something. Yes. Um, uh, I'm, I'm big on law of attraction, so yes. a lot of those kind of quotes as well. Yep. Um, but, yeah, uh, the, un- the other one – one that stands out for from my dad is um uh he always he always says like he like he gives me all these lectures and like and we look at it as lectures yes. but a lot of them are, are you know lessons that he teaches me mm-hmm. but um and a lot of them are like I can just use any of those as one of the um you know the quotes mm-hmm. um but he always says at the end that you know, you guys might be rolling your eyes now that you're young, mm-hmm. but wait till you, you're, you know, you're a parent, yeah. you, you'll, you'll uh, understand. Yeah. And now that I'm a parent, 100%, uh, a lot of all those lessons come back to me yeah. now that I'm a parent. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and now I say it to my kid, he's yeah. like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I did that. Okay. I'm the queen of that. Okay. Yeah. That's exactly what dad says as well. I did that too. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that you're doing, yes, I know. That's yeah. what we used to do. Mm-hmm. But just, just listen. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to help you. Yeah, no, that's fair. But yeah, oh shit, that was on the spot. <laughs> yeah, sorry, terrible at the yeah. spot. Yeah, but yeah. Oh no, that was awesome. Cool. That's the icebreaker for today, guys. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on to. <coughs> oh shit! Okay. Was I supposed to talk about? Uh huh. Anyway, story of the day. <laughs> It was such enthusiasm. Because <laughs> it's out of order on my... Oh, on my <laughs> okay, it's okay. <laughs> All right, story of the day. So um, uh, last night, Coconut TV, um, on their YouTube channel, they premiered um, this t- new TV series that's coming out. Yeah. Um, it's a Pacific TV series, ba- and it's called Dene Sa, mm-hmm. uh, Ancient Ones. Okay. I highly recommend it. Like it, it, um, we did an episode mm-hmm. um, on the Halloween episode. Yes. So we were briefly talked about it, but this is like they take um, you know all these um, ancient like the TNSR, mm-hmm. so ancient spirits, and they sort of bring it into like a modern world. Okay. Which was why Ooh. it was yeah even like even more fascinating. But um, the actress, I the it was only. The first episode that came out yesterday. Okay. Uh, um, it's directed by Tor Fraser and Sima Urale, um, and uh, <coughs> the main actress in it, she uh, her her name's Frankie Adams. Oh yeah, Frankie Adams. Yeah, just from um, I think Shortland Street in that. Yeah, she's on the she's um expanse. Yes, mm-hmm. she is. Yeah. Um, but she. Um, I won't go, like ruin it or yeah. anything, but she she's the main character in that. Mad. Um, it's mainly her and her nana, um, yep. Leia Zawa, Maya Brown. Um, you, you see her on a lot of the Fresh TV um, uh, episodes, and then uh, there's another one that played Mele, another um, another um, Islander. Yep. Um, and yeah, they it was mainly them three. Okay, so they were really really good. Uh, I really liked their acting in it. Um, but so you can watch it on the website. 
Yeah, you can watch it uh, um, for us because I, I don't know if they air it out on Fresh TV in New Zealand but mm-hmm. or Prime or something, yeah. but we, we can watch it on YouTube. So yeah. YouTube Coconut TV. Cool. Um, the series is called DNSR. But, um, yeah. I'm going to watch that. Uh, apparently this TV series also it features um, a Melanesian story uh, and it was written and directed and crewed by um, Melanesian women. So, yeah. Work it, girls. Um, but, yeah, it was, it's definitely um, pretty much a, a – because it's DNSR, um, so it's it's based around like female, so it's highly female characters, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, it's just about dramatizing the legends um, into the modern world with different female characters. So the, your episode one is different to episode two, so it's not a whole. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So it's it's each episode is a different story. Man. Yeah. Um, but I think it's that so far I've heard it. There's only five. There's five stories, so okay. there'll probably only be five episodes. Was it like an hour long? No, it wasn't even. Um, I think it was about twenty minutes. Oh yeah, it wasn't that long. Okay. I was just like, D- "Is there more?" Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, but that that once the story that I watched, it just it, it ended, and I, I wanted to see more of mm-hmm. that story. Um. But then the next one, I know it's going to be a totally different story. Okay. So, yeah. Um. But it's exciting. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Check it out, guys. I want to check it out now. Yeah, um, and well done to to the people that directed it, and that it's good to see our people on yeah yeah film and behind the screen as mm-hmm. well. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So next segment. Um, what's on your mind? <laughs> uh, so this one. <coughs> excuse me. I'll just read it. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's important to work hard your whole life so that when you retire, you can afford the treatment to deal with the mental and physical pain caused by a lifetime of hard work. <laughs> I'm not sure how to take this. <laughs> I'm like, um, uh, like it's 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 a fair statement, but I'm just like, um, it's so true, but it is. But I'm just also like, that's sad. <laughs> Uh, so moral of the story, work, work smarter, not harder. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what we're trying to portray here. Um, all right, just <laughs> uh, I've actually been dreading this one because I actually like, you know, was um See, I feel like every time I get slack. the just jokes, it's it's not that great. Yours have been like a lot better than mine. Like, uh, I'm being completely honest. I think this one's my least funniest, but okay. um, I, I, I found this one hilarious because it, it just speaks to me. <laughs> Anyway, here it goes. Have you met Post Malone's introvert brother? No. Leave Malone. (laughs) That was a good one, but nah, I like that one. Leave Malone. (laughs) And it's M apostrophe alone. (laughs) Nah, I like that one. I'm going to use that one now. (laughs) Thanks, cuz. All right. Okay, next one. um, (coughs) Moving on to main topic. So this one's on me. Um, this one we've been, well, I'm going to be completely honest. I've wanted to do this for a while. Um, I just think we, I've, I don't know if it was just Me, you. I was okay. uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's, yeah. So, so we we held off on it for a while yeah. um, and then we saw um, others and, and it was amazing. So I, it pushed me more to be like, you know, I want our opinion out there too. Mm. Um, basically our topic for today is sex. <laughs> Um, and you know, we're going to be adult about it and, and, you know, just, it's more for, for like, you know, our opinion and mm. to educate others and, and whatnot, but it's mainly because without, within our community, mm. it's, it's taboo and it's almost like non-existent, not that it's non-existent, but there's like a, people pretend like it's not happening. <laughs> Um, we just pop out and we're not sure how that works because, um, I don't know, I was, I was telling my friends this and they could not stop laughing, you know, laughing with Samoans. Yeah. Where Tofunga does a skit where um, he's trying to explain to his Balangi girlfriend mm. the difference between Balangi families and island families, specifically Samoan families. Yeah. Um, so he's he's doing the skit, and one of them is he explains um, the difference between a Balangi wedding and a Samoan wedding. Yes. Um, and so he explains that when the the minister, whoever says, you know, you may now kiss the bride. <laughs> 
um, you know, Balangis passionately kiss, you know, it's their first kiss as husband and wife and you can no see way. the love yeah. and, you know, <laughs> that they've sealed the deal mm. with this kiss and it's really beautiful to, to see. Um, and then he says with, with a Samoan family, when, when the minister <laughs> says you may now kiss the bride, they stare at each other <laughs> <laughs> because it's awkward. Like their parents are there, their grandparents, their families are there. Yeah. And then they're looking at each other like, shame. <laughs> and then and then Tofinga added, he's like, you know, they're acting like they're strangers, but the bride's standing there seven months pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, it was hilarious, yeah. but it was more hilarious because it happens, yeah. especially within our culture. So I think... I really wanted to talk about this because as a mum, mm. even though my kid is quite young, uh, I still want us to sort of, you, you're going to have to talk about the uncomfortable things. Oh, yeah. Um, whether it's with your kids or with, you know, your family or with your friends. And I've had a lot of debates with my friends where they just don't agree or mm. they don't want to do certain things. And that's fine because that's that's them. Um, but it's important for us to, to discuss these things yeah. just so that people are made aware. It was funny last night. Um, I was telling, I was talking to my brother. Yeah, and um, <coughs> he asked what topic we were doing yep. today, and I was like straight away, you know, yeah, automatically feel Ooh. yeah, you like uncomfortable. And, and <laughs> you see, I was like, um, I would have been like, um, oh, we're huh? doing this one, S E X. Like you can't even say the damn word. You just like what well, nervous yeah. and like. Mm. But then um, I actually spoke to him about it, and then um, we had a conversation. And honest, like I, like I will admit, it was like very awkward. Yeah, we didn't talk about like you know we didn't go into like like depth graphic of, yeah, details. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. We were actually talking about you know just what we're gonna talk about today. Yes. And um, but yeah. And he, anyway, we were talking about it. We were open and blah blah. blah and then in the end, he goes, "Yeah, yeah, this was really really awkward." <laughs> Like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Let's just go go in our rooms now and just stay away from each other. <laughs> but uh, it was yeah, it was the first time I had ever, besides you, but like yeah, you know, spoken to any yeah. of my siblings about yeah. it. But yeah, <laughs> I think that's all. I think with my siblings, it was a little bit different. Um, where where sometimes they would tell me um, when they have experienced it or when oh, okay when we would talk about you know. Uh, Doing the deed, yeah. So, so certain things to you know look out for to make sure you're doing, yeah, and whatnot. Um, so that was that was different. Um, very uncomfortable for me as the big sister. <laughs> we love them, um, but yeah. So, so very grateful because we have that sort of relationship. Yeah. But also, yes, I understand the uncomfortableness of it because as an older sister, you you don't know what to say. Yeah. Um, but you try really hard to help help them through it or guide them through it or give them the best advice you can give them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. The reason why I wanted to also discuss this is because, um, you know how you just said when you were talking to, oh, sorry, talking to Cuz about it, um, how even you were like, <laughs> S-E-X. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, 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 this is just what I believe. Most island families, I'm going to go with Samoan because we're Samoan, mm -hmm. um, we are very sheltered when it comes to this specific topic yeah. and as much as I do this, I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence about it because I don't know if it's a good thing. I don't know if it's a bad thing. Yeah. Um, but I do know that it very, we're very sheltered like yeah. to the point where we can't even feel comfortable to, to discuss these yeah. sorts of things with our own siblings, yeah. let alone, let alone our own parents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to just ask you, how did you learn about sex? <laughs> Um, so I was six years old and what? I, yeah, and I, and I learned <coughs> it, I found out about it from friends at school. At six? At six. What kind of school were you going to? I, know. <laughs> I didn't even know about it. I, like, you know, at that point I just, like, I, I didn't even question where babies come from. You know, yeah. they always say, you know, be prepared when your baby asks. Yeah. And they always like sort of, um. Refer to like two to three year olds or something yeah. like that. If they ask, well, "Mommy, where does baby comes from? Yeah. Where do baby come from?" Yeah, we I never ever thought about that. Yeah, but it was um it wasn't until um so yeah my friends at school mm. told me about it and when um when they described it I was so put off. Yeah, well you're and six. You're not supposed yeah. to really. Yeah, I I went home and I could not look at my parents. <laughs> 
Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. I felt like I hated them because oh. for some reason I I had, I had thought <coughs> that that it was a bad thing. Yeah. And to me, I thought that was a sin. Okay. And so to find out that that's how I came. Yeah. <laughs> that's how me and my siblings were born. Yeah. I was like, sinners. <laughs> You disgust me. <laughs> like, yeah, so that was Aww, <laughs> you can think. So I was like, yeah, it was really, um, uh, but I, I think that's the majority of kids. I think, yeah, yeah. Every, every kid's different. I'm, I'm pretty sure mine was school as well, but yeah. it was more, um, like I said, very sheltered that mm. we, we didn't know anything about, you know, intercourse or, you yeah. know, relationships or things like that. Um, so we learned it in school when we were learning about how babies, could, like, enter mm. into the world so that when I saw this video in um in, in the class with with my friends I was a lot of them had already known because some of them were experienced and yeah oh, they've already done it how old were you I think I was 15 16 oh wow yeah but I was still like I said very the, the way I was completely different to another kid yeah so I was very timid in the sense of that stuff when it came to to sex oh, wow. I was very I was too nervous to even look at a boy <laughs> Did you even know about the act before you found out about that's how babies are made? You know how when you watch movies, and this is another thing with Island Families, when you're watching a movie with your your family members and um, a sex scene comes on, <laughs> they they you know close your eyes, close your eyes. But like we, I, we won't even we would <laughs> <Stop do>, it. <laughs> turn it off. No, but if it's a movie our, our parents have put on, like my mom's like, true stories or fiction, like any of those sorts of movies, and then it would come on. We'd be told like they tell us to close our eyes, and and I would do that, but my ears aren't. <laughs> <laughs> my ears can't silence what's on the freaking screen, yeah. so I would close my eyes. So even though I knew that it was something, because they're saying that you, you think it's something inappropriate, you're not yeah. meant to be doing, you're not meant to be seeing. So um yeah, I would close my. So I was very like I said, sheltered, like protected, did not even think. So I didn't even know the actual act. The actual oh, okay. act of, wow. of sex until this, <laughs> until this, um, I mean, in the way of how babies are born. Yeah. So I knew that, you know, girls have parts, boys have parts, but I wasn't sure what the go was. Yeah. Um, with that. So we watched it in, in this, in this classroom and, um, I was fully scarred because <laughs> it, it's a cartoon video of, um, two people, well, a guy and a girl, and they're obviously doing the deed. And then, under the blanket. Yes, <laughs> and they show everything like in in cartoon like version, but it, you could you, you still see know the movement. Yes. So. <laughs> and it's just like um, and then they they explain how the parts you know go into other parts and and then if if certain things come out of those parts, it creates a life within <laughs> the girl and um. And then they showed and then because it led into how the baby's actually born, mm. so it went from one crazy thing that I wasn't really exposed to yeah to another thing where it's like oh my gosh this is how <laughs> this is how a baby comes into the, are you serious yeah so <clears throat> so yeah so that's why i i was like i went home and i couldn't even look at my mom because she hadn't explained it to us yeah um she hadn't taught us anything about that she hadn't prepared me <laughs> especially as a young kid because it's when you're a teenager, for me, mm. a lot of our young youth and, you know, they they just go for it. Yeah. And um, that's very brave, but it's also very, um, like, because you're so naive and you're so young, you have no idea the, the, the consequences of what's about to happen when you do that. Mm. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, as I got older, um, I looked at that, <coughs> that cartoon and I was like, I think that was that's the wrong way to show kids. Yeah. How to because to be honest, like, there were some like you know guys, um, like one of my gay guy mates came out and he was like um, aroused. It was like oh. their version because back then we didn't have mobile phones. Yeah. But, um, oh, we did, but it was Nokia's. <laughs> <laughs> you're playing but, snake on that. Yeah. That's what you're doing. <laughs> um, but it was like their version of 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 porn. Okay. Because even though you're not seeing the act, it was you know. just almost like, yeah, like softcore yeah. porn Holy kind crap, of thing. I didn't even know that. How like, old was the kid? We were all in our teens. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, for a teenager yeah. to see that sort of thing, they came out, they come out more excited. They want to try that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. now they're aroused. And um, yeah, I, I, I didn't think that, that, 
for girls, yeah, maybe, but mm. for boys, I don't think that yeah. uh, taught them anything. <laughs> If you actually learned the like you know educational <laughs> purposes of that out there, let us know. But um, <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure for the majority of boys, yeah, it did the opposite effect. Yeah, yeah. So do you think? Okay, this this is this is where my why I'm on the fence. Mm. I my question is: Do you think parents should keep sheltering their their kids around sex, or do you think they should start talking to their kids about sex? Um, I think they should be talking. Okay, but it dep- like. It's it's hard eh? it could be mm. because it depends on your relationship with your child because yeah. I mean we grew up where we couldn't even we say anything to to our parents because there were so many rules of yeah. the way you talk to your parents mm. you have to you know in, in our culture you, you only speak to them with respect you yeah. don't do anything like you out know, of line kind of thing. out of line mm. yeah so there wasn't even any it wasn't open for communication yeah um, <clears throat> but yeah <coughs> I I think. Yeah, it's something important. Like mm. so it, I, I reckon that you know parents should be having the conversation with them, okay. um, and also like um, I think if you hear it from your parents, you'd be put off. Hundred percent. I'm doing it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like you, you, you get uncomfortable, but yeah. But I think hearing it from your parents first before yeah. you, you you go into that educational stuff. Mm. Um, I, I, yeah. Okay. I, I think it's important. Yeah. I'm a little bit torn only because for me, because I was so sheltered and so, you know, like didn't know anything about it or whatever, mm. I hadn't even considered it. You know what I mean? Oh, um, okay. Hadn't even thought about it or wanted to, to do the actual act or, yeah. you know. Um, and I don't know if it's because, you know, it depends on the individual. Because me as a kid, I was terrified of of holding a boy's hand, <laughs> of like, you know, kissing or like, you know, mm. stuff like that. So I knew for sure I wasn't going to be um, ready yeah. to go that that way mm. anytime soon. Yeah. So I think that's why for me I wasn't too too fussed that I wasn't taught about it. Yeah. But as a parent now, there's no way I'm not telling my kid what the hell's going on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think like you you would be every parent's <laughs> dream child (laughs) (laughs) but I think for the majority like you see you know because of that lack of communication and and awareness is that they 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 fall pregnant yeah they're young yeah um they don't even like I don't know if these kids know that there's protection out there what kind of protection yeah Yeah. Yeah. I think they just they just because you know when your hormones are yeah on fire and you're just you really like this person yeah. and you like you, you love them. You know, you're know you at the age where you're in love. Yeah. And when you're that young and in love, um, sometimes you don't use your brain to, to, to process certain things. Um, so I get what you're saying about that, Cuz, but I'm, I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think if, um, if someone was to tell me about, like, you know, the how you get babies yeah. and <clears> – <throat> The consequences yeah. of having a baby, yeah, you know how you, you know, you like right now, you, mm. no sleep, yeah, um, you know, you have to, you know, yeah, like, you need to pay most, a lot of money. <laughs> it's expensive, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you have no freedom, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like all of that stuff, yeah. like, um, then yeah, I think people would, you know, yeah. reconsider using protection. Mm. Like, I mean, if they were, I, I guess, like, you know, it's inevitable that kids will will have sex, yeah. But I, th- I don't think they're ill pre- prepared for it. Yeah, like uh, ill equipped for it. You yeah. know what I mean. Like, yeah, uh, I don't think any kids out there know too much about the mm. different types of protection that yeah. you can have. Um, like even the rod, I didn't just found out about that recently. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I've never heard of the rod. Have you? Oh, okay. So I, I I've used it um, because I didn't want to fall pregnant. Mm. After I had my, my daughter, I wanted a bit of a break because um, labor is, is is quite an experience. <laughs> so yeah, so it's for me it was good. Each girl's different. Yeah. Um, they so so the one I got it's implanted into your arm, mm. um, and it's for three years. So you have it in there for three years, and then when you come back, um, but you can take it out whenever you want. Yeah, it's just it'll last up to three years. So once the three years is up, you come back and you take it out and you decide whether you want to put another one in yeah. or you're ready to start can you know trying for a baby. Um, so I found that one really good. Um, How did you find that one out? Who like where? Who did you find that out from? So my family doctor. So when oh. I felt pregnant, yeah, when I felt pregnant, she was my GP for the whole time I was pregnant. 
then when I gave birth, yeah, and then <coughs> excuse me, after I gave birth, um, she was asking me what like you know options and um, what I wanted to do, yeah. if, if I'm going to try again like really early or if I wanted to consider contraception. <coughs> so then I asked her the options. Um, there was one where uh, I don't know if it, is it the IUD or something. Something I'll come up with the correct. Um, what is it? It it actually goes. It's inserted into the girl's. Um, oh, like a cup. Yeah. Oh, no. sim, it's that little. It's sim, It's like a rod, but it actually goes up in there, and, oh. it's, and it clips onto something, um, so that it prevents you from getting pregnant. I didn't want anything after you have a baby. Like I didn't even go near near that area. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want anything else. I'm going anywhere near there. So I was like, nah, that's not an option. Then she um, asked if I was interested in the pill. Yeah. Um, and with me, because I'm very forgetful, mm. I, I I knew I wouldn't be um, taking it as consecutively and on time yeah. as I'm supposed to. So I would forget and um, or I'd miss miss a day and then I'd and then I'd freak out because yeah. So I knew I wouldn't be reliable <laughs> within myself to um, stay on the pill. So I said, nah, that's not an option. <coughs> Sorry. You're right. Um, so, yeah. So then the other one was the rod. Mm. And then I asked her what that one was. And she goes, oh, it's this um, this little tiny metal thing that they put in your arm. Um, they have to numb the area to obviously insert it into your arm. Yeah. Um, but once you they put it in, as soon as they put it in, you you can't get pregnant. There's no way. Wow. See, I had no idea. Yeah. Like, I, um, I only found out through you um, and this lady at work. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I had no idea. All I knew was um, condoms and contraceptives, yeah. the, the pills. Yeah. And, I, like, because my hormones, pills don't do well for me. Yeah. And, like, it's hard to get, you know, guys to wear yeah. a condom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but, like, um, so recently, yeah, like, I had the option, of, uh, like, I found out about the rod. I didn't even know about the other one. Yeah. But I think, like, you know, a lot of kids out there don't know that they there's different know. types. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, I for think me... Oh, sorry. Cause you no, no, no. Like for me in my thirties, I just did. I had I only just found out recently. Yeah, yeah. And again, I think that's because of our upbringing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, because I have a loved one who was was very young. Um, when they got pregnant, um, because I just I knew there was no sense of guidance. Yeah. Or or education or um anything. Yeah. Re- relating to sex, um, so there was no way they could have known about contraception because at that age. Um, I didn't even know about contrac- yeah. contraception and um, it's, <laughs> I know it's, it's a very difficult thing to talk to your kids about, but um, I had this debate with one of my girlfriends Yeah, and the debate was when your teenage kid comes to you mm. and they tell you that they're considering having sex, yeah. um, you as a parent, how do you react? And I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know how I'll react until it happens. Yeah. Um. But they were trying to ask. Um. Would it Would it be better if they're at home, your home, and you've provided contraception and education and whatever, like condoms and like you know, um, put put the kid on the pill mm. or put, put them on the rod. Would you prefer them at home and they they they're being safe, or would you just let them do it and see how they go? Well, not see how they go, but <laughs> what would make you more comfortable? And my honest answer is. Them having sex would make – like no sex is, is what would make me comfortable. Um, but I'm not going to be stupid and, and believe my kid's not going to go out there and have sex because kids kids do things. Yeah. And um, <laughs> they they were just adamant – a lot of my friends are very adamant that their kids are not going to have sex. They're, oh, yeah. They're, um, they're going to teach them that, you know, they're not supposed to have sex until this certain age or when they're married. And that's great. Like to me that's a great – thing to try and teach your kid. Yeah. But what is like what is the chance of your kid having sex after the re- marriage? What's the reality yes, of like, it? Like like do you really believe what is the higher chance of them yeah. having sex after marriage or before? Yeah. Um and I'm completely honest, it's it's I'm pretty sure it's, it's gonna be before they get yeah. married because you know we're human. So I, I don't know which one I would I would be more comfortable with. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you, like if your your kid was to come to you and be like, "Hey, mom, um, I'm really into this girl. I'm going to be completely honest. I, I I think I'm considering having sex. Would you prefer them to be at home and it's under your roof and you've provided like contraception and education and support? Yeah. Or would you be like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, 
you know, this is the contraception, <laughs> this is condoms, this is whatever, and you don't want it in your home. I don't think I would be like, you know, <laughs> naming a, a, a time and place. <laughs> right. I, I think like, um, yeah, give them the education. Yeah. Give, you know, even provide if you yeah. need to. Um, but, uh, yeah, as like as long as they know that mm-hmm. wherever they do it, yeah. they have protection. Yeah. Um, I, I, will, I would be honestly surprised if, if – they, you know, to, for them to mention mm. like that they, you know, communicate to you that they <laughs> want to have sex is yeah. already like, you know, that's a good kid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's someone that trusts you. Yeah. So so you, you as a parent have done your, what you were supposed to do yeah. to make them feel comfortable to come to you about that. Because <laughs> I know my daughter's only four, but we've already started this sort of relationship where she comes to me about anything. So I'll be like, if you need to talk to mom about anything, if you even if you're not happy with me, yeah. you need to tell me. Yeah. So I can, I can you know communicate back with you. We can work on it or whatever. So she she'll be like, mom, I really need to speak to you about something. I'll be like, I, I know she's only four guys. Relax. I'm um, I'm just saying. <laughs> she'll be like, I need to talk to you about something. And I'll be like, okay, what's up? Like you know you mm. can tell mom. And it depends on her mood. So sometimes it will be something very very serious. Mm. Like oh, I'm feeling a bit sad at the moment. And then I'll be like, you know, why are you sad? And then she'll explain to me her reasons for being sad. And then we we go over, like, you know, what we can do yeah, um, and, and so forth. But uh, other times she's like, oh, mom, this girl at school took my hat. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to be honest, when I was telling you, I was like, oh, man, I don't want to listen to the irrelevant stuff, you know. Yeah. But then Jules actually made me see that even the little things you should be able to accept in the sense of they, mm. they can come to you about anything. So whether it's small, you know, as small as a girl taking her hat or as big as they're considering sex. Yeah. If you keep that line of communication open, they should be able to come to you about anything. Yeah. Um, but that's just us. Like, did you, <laughs> did you ever try and talk to your mom about like, you know, like periods or sex or um, contraception or did you ever consider going to the, to your parents about, no, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think the cl- to be honest, the closest I came to any of that kind of conversation was when I had my period. Okay, uh, as soon as I had it, and you know, uh, when you freak out because you didn't know about it. Yeah, um, and yeah, when I had it, and then mom sat me down. Oh, actually, no, I'm wrong. Sorry, my cousin stayed over with us <coughs> for a few months. Yeah, she got hers before me. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and because her mom wasn't around, my mom had that talk with her. Oh. Yeah. And I was there. Okay. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so I heard it, and like I was like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and then mom explained to her, um, you know what happens, and I, I, it touched on the birds and the bees. Yeah. But um, but yeah, for me who wasn't even going through it, like I, I heard, I overheard that. So when I saw it, when I you know, got mine. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I know what this means. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but, um, that, I think that was the closest I've ever gotten to mm. hearing that sort of thing. Cause yeah, she, mom did, did, she didn't speak, speak to me directly about mm. it, but she spoke to my cousin Yeah, and I just overheard. Okay. I think with me, um, it was weird. My, my mom had actually sat me down about, you know, girls getting their period. Mm. Um, which was funny because I'm pretty sure it was a week or two later I got my my first period. Yeah. So I was actually lucky in that sense where she she talked to me about it. But even when she spoke to me about it, it didn't really register to me why my body's changing like that. It was just, oh. it was just more like it was just more like hey like you know when you're a certain age you, this is going to happen to your body. But it wasn't more, oh. it wasn't more it was it wasn't more in the sense of um this is why it's going to happen. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. You know, you're, you're becoming a woman. Um, your body is going to change because eventually, like, you're going to do something. You're going yeah. to have sex. And um, you're going to get pregnant, like, yeah. one day. Um, that's that's pretty much the gist. And yeah. I, I think because it was only the first step of the period was discussed about, I just let it lie. I was like, oh, yeah, well, this is just what my body's doing. Yeah. But I didn't understand fully why my body is doing this. Ah, okay. It was yeah. one of those like, oh, this is going to happen every month. Um, this mm. is what you're going to do. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So that was, I think if I had known why, 
I would have been more aware. Yeah. But because it was just changing and I'm just like, well, I know my body is changing, but why, why is this happening to me? <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. I don't know how mom would have approached <laughs> that topic with me because mm. like I said, I overheard it when she was explaining it to my cousin. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, when- from what she was saying to my cousin was she explained what, what it actually is, mm. why you get it. Um, and also like, you know, the, the whole pregnancy part yeah. cause like, yeah. Um, but she did mention, um, you know, that, you know, brief, well, she touched on the birds and the bees, but I don't, I don't, can't remember mm. if she actually explained okay. the sex or yeah. she just said that, you know, when you meet someone and then, you know, you, you know, things happen between a boy and a girl and then, you know, the girl falls pregnant. But because I had already known that from when I was six years old, I think that's why I didn't really sort of make, like, I wasn't shocked by mm-hmm. it because I had already found that out when I was six. Yeah. Um, but then when, so, yeah, so when mom was explaining it to her, I was just like, oh, okay. So I I, I, I picked up on the period part, but I had already knew about the sex part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But did you tell your mom after you had your first period? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I because mom knew I had the convers she had the conversation and I was there because yeah. it wasn't not lo- it wasn't long after that yeah yeah, I think I'm loving this new trend um that mums are doing now when their daughters even dads they're doing it too when their daughters um get their first period they get this like gift box made for them like their period box ah oh, that's a school schools do it. They do it too? Yeah. I saw it for the first time, I think, a couple of years ago, and I was like, oh, my gosh, that's definitely what I'm going to do with my daughter because <laughs> it was so cute because um, it has, you know, obviously the pads or yeah. tampons or and then chocolates and, you know, um, congratulations, you're becoming a woman, like, you know. Yeah. And I thought that was great because it's celebrating the girl's, you know, that she, her body's changing mm. and, you know, she's growing up. Um, so I love that. I think I know I'm going to do that eventually when my daughter has, yeah. you know, her period. <coughs> <laughs> when your daughter had, um, if you, if she has it, you're gonna do the gift box. Yeah, gift I'm box. gonna do that. I think it's different with us because you have sons. Mm. So, like as you said, boys are a lot more, I guess, exposed or, or interested in having sex, and you know, because they're boys. I, I don't think that's a great reason, you know, because they're boys. But I just I know that when boys get to a certain age, they're very. It's easily they're easily aroused. Yeah. <laughs> So, so how would you start a conversation with your son? Or are you going to leave that to the dad or? Oh, yeah. M- most of it will be um, Rob to, yeah. you know, have the discussion with them. But, mm. yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll also step in. I think that's another reason is that, like, you know, with us growing up, so because of period, mm-hmm. that's why we have the conversation. We're more aware. Yeah. Well, boys don't. Mm. They don't have that conversation because yeah. they don't have they don't go through anything that prompts that yeah. discussion, mm. um, which is probably you know why it's and plus for our culture like boys can do whatever they want. Legit, man. Let's be let's be honest. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Like boys can go and like you know f around whenever they want, and that's accepted. Mm-hmm. A g- if a girl was to do that, oh, <laughs> we're like tarnished and stuff. Yeah, like if they hear that a girl's promiscuous or you know, mm. um not a conservative conservative young lady. Yeah. We get branded very very harshly. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's in all society, but spe- because we're islanders, <laughs> I feel like it's a lot harsh. <laughs> I know. Like um, you know, like for example w- with dad, like you know, with me it was always more <coughs> focusing around on my future, my education, blah blah, blah and it was um, but with the boys, it's like, when are you going to, you know, when are you going to find a gang you or yeah. like, you know, um, like, you know, where, uh, are you, it was almost like they wanted to know if they're, they're sort of, you know, um, like having girlfriends. Yeah. I think their, their concern there is if they have boyfriends. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I don't know, like. Yeah, that's just how it was. Yeah. And um, it was with me, like, you know, it's a no-no to ever – just even going out. Mm-hmm. Like, I couldn't go out. Mm. Boys can go out as long as they yeah. want. But, uh, and, I, and I see that in our culture anyway. Yeah. But, yeah, but now nah, with my sons. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, will educate them. Yeah. Because I don't trust the school system. Yeah. Well, I was watching this um, – oh, I forgot her name. 
she's this funny Samoan, she's a uh, Samoan lady on TikTok and she's on Instagram too, where she she speaks on this about how she's she's got daughters, but she will never ever say things to them like, um, you have to do this because you're a girl. Um, you have to do that because you're a girl. You oh, can't yeah. do this because you're a girl. Yeah. And she said she's never ever going to say that to her daughters, especially in front of her sons. Yeah. <laughs> Because she said whatever's bad for the daughter should be bad for the son as well. Mm. And whatever's good for the daughter is also good for the son. Yeah. So she goes, some always need to stop this um, thing where they, for some reason, when it comes to genders, girls are very, um, they can't do anything. 100%. Yeah. Whereas the boys can do everything. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of the stuff they do, even bad stuff, mm. people let it like slide. Mm. Whereas a girl, you, you can't do anything. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, a lot of the guys out there would deny that. But, like, from experience, and mm-hmm. we have a lot of brothers, how yeah. easy was it for them to, like, you yeah. know, do whatever they want? And yeah. we were very protected. Yeah. I don't know why, because, like, you know, <coughs> yes, we're the ones that carry the baby. Yeah. But they're the ones that are making the babies. Yes. And, like, for me, I'd be, you know, like, I'd be equally scared if mm-hmm. my son went and, you know, impregnated somebody. Yeah. But it's almost there's no concern about that either. If a boy goes and, you know, impregnates that girl, mm. it's okay for him if he, you know, re- neglects her or yeah. leaves her mm-hmm. and then go fool around with someone else and, you know, there's a, a kid there with no father. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's almost that's or, uh, that's okay. I don't know how that's socially acceptable. I know. Whereas um, the girl who actually got pregnant, hmm. She's branded like she's branded as you know a, a naughty you know yeah didn't like listen to her parents and you know again promiscuous mm-hmm. or you know slutty or or anything like that and 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 I find that with Islanders especially some ones because we're some one um, the gossip like <laughs> that comes with um, a young kid getting pregnant mm. is is just I can't um, I can't even fathom adults speaking this way about a kid yeah. because it's like. You have all this stuff to say about that that child, who's a child. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> like, are you perfect? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and like, is that kid perfect? The guy who got her pregnant is he perfect? Like, how yeah. how have you accepted that he's done that? Yeah. But like, I would hear like you know at church or you oh. know people over the phone or um you know people like talking around yeah. or um even if I was like catching a train to work and I can hear like. Because I, I think people forget where Samoan... I don't know if they forget mm. or they assume we don't understand how to speak it or or understand what they're saying. Yeah. So I hear a lot of conversations sometimes when I'm, I'm on the train of, of different island island ladies, obviously island ladies because I don't think men give a crap. Um, and they're talking a lot of smack about a lot of things. Yeah. And um, that's what I mean. How I don't understand how, how the poor 15-year-old girl who got pregnant is made out to be, you know, this horrible person. Whereas the the guy, it's almost like no one even talks about the guy. No one even <laughs> gives a crap about the guy. All they know is she got pregnant and who cares she, about the yeah, guy? Yeah, I know. She just got pregnant for, out of nowhere. Yeah, like, like she, she just, just climbed on top of herself <laughs> and got pregnant. No one even mentions it really. No. If they do, they'll be like, oh, it's this person's son, but then it's nothing. It's mm. it's not even like, you know, they should get a job. They should help pay for the kid. They yeah. they That's half of their kid. Like they made that kid together. Um. But yeah, it's been, when I hear someone talk about you know this stuff, I just I'm just like who, but who are you? Yeah. <laughs> but it's almost like because um, I think they're more harsh on on girls uh, when they're pregnant because it's it's in <coughs> your in your face. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna be honest. Like a lot of Islanders, specifically someone's like from experience, I, I, and I see this everywhere. Um, they love if something happens, mm-hmm. they love to sweep it under the rug. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But with a if there's a pregnant child, you cannot hide that. Yeah. There's nothing that you know. It, it's you know yeah. everyone's gonna see it. Yeah. Everyone's gonna know. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows how you get pregnant. Yeah. Um, and that's talk. Yeah. But they wouldn't if that person didn't get pregnant and they knew they were fooling around. Yeah. They knew they were like you know having sex. Mm-hmm. That's swept on the rug. They yeah. turn a blind eye to that. Mm-hmm. But like they, they don't have that conversation with that child. Hey, if you're going to do that, yeah, go put like you know, go get some protection. See, you're 100 percent right there. Like 100 percent right because you're too busy talking shit about yeah. this kid. But what what did you do to help them not get to the position that they're <laughs> exactly. in? Exactly. <laughs> like if anything, you should you're partly to blame. <laughs> like, you idiots! Like 
What did you do to make sure that she wouldn't go off and, and you know, have se- well, not just have sex, but get herself pregnant? Um, if you didn't do anything to help contribute, then you have no say. Yeah. But it's always the ones with the skeletons in their closet mm-hmm. that have a lot to say. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, like, you know, we have somebody in our family that fell pregnant when they were, or well, few in our family. Yeah. Um, you know, they got pregnant young. Yeah. At, but the older generation that looked, you know, at, at <coughs> these kids yeah. had so much to say. Had heaps to say. But I was like, mm, I don't know, your, your skeletons. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's <laughs> what I'm saying. It's not fair. You can't put all this stuff on a child yeah. when you're not even looking at yourself. Yeah. Like well, what did they you They actually, do? yeah, like the ones that did say something, they, were, they had gotten pregnant when they were in their teens. Mm-hmm. But for some reason that's a different time. Yeah. Which I'm just like, okay, if that's a different time, then how is it not accepted now? And I felt, and then it's you don't talk back to your elders. Oh man, <laughs> so it's like a lose lose, and that's what I'm saying. Communication is key, man. Like yeah. especially about the uncomfortable stuff, like sex, it needs to be done. Yeah, because I'm 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 so tired of um, like young youth. Yeah, being um, you know what's the what's the word? Like uh, criticized. Yes, um, like. Be- the kids are being criticised, but I'm like, <laughs> well, like rep- yeah, punished. Yeah, and, yeah but where were the, the parents or the guardians or whoever? Where were they? And I'm not saying this is all the parents' fault because again, kids do things. Things happen. But I'm saying if if you're that type of parent who who did not, you know, educate your kid, mm. guide your kid, speak to them about contraception, um, then you cannot be surprised or cannot be so harsh on the child. For going off and getting pregnant. Yeah. It makes no sense to me. <laughs> but that, I think that's another reason why, I mean, because we're very prideful people. Yeah. And if your kid went <coughs> and got themselves pregnant or got someone else pregnant, yeah. that's a reflection on them. Yeah. So they feel like, oh, you, you know, you shamed me. Yeah. Be- it's because now they're going to have to go around and they're yeah. the ones, they know that they've the one, they're the ones that made that mistake. Yeah. They're the ones that failed okay. as a parent. Can I ask you guys? What would you do if your your sons came to you and you found out one of them had gotten another girl or a girl pregnant? What would you oh, how, how would you feel? How would you you know approach your son or you know? Mm. Um, right. I would I'm, I'm like I'm like well, hell no. But yeah. No. Um, let's just say that they're a teenager because obviously when they're yeah. a grown man and they're you know adults now and they've you know that's that's completely different. I, I'm speaking specifically youth. Yeah, they're still young kids, and then no, you find I out. would tell them that they need to take that take yeah. care of their responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, they yeah yeah, and get their asses into work mm-hmm. and provide for for yeah. that child. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> like you said, you know how because I have a daughter, and I'm not saying it's it's better for either one. Mm. I'm just saying because you said mentioned that it's in your face, and the girl's the one who obviously shows that they're pregnant. Yeah, because they're the one who's who get pregnant. Um. <laughs> Uh, now I'm uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> if she came to me and she she said I'm pregnant, I'm going to be completely honest. I would feel like some sort of failure, only because oh, yeah. again, I want us to have that sort of um, relationship where she can come mm. to me about anything and everything. And if she was to come to me earlier, you know, it's all stuff be- pro- yeah. before. So the all the preparation you do beforehand, and for it to lead to that, I would be very disappointed. Not in her, um, well. I guess a little bit, but more so with myself. Yeah. Because if 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 that was to happen, and um, that means I didn't do my groundwork oh, yeah. to lead into that. Yeah. Um. So I'm not gonna lie. I would be pretty disappointed, but um, you obviously can't do anything. Like yeah. you know, what what are you meant to do? Exactly. Uh, like I same with the boys. Yeah. Like I would be a hundred percent upset at yeah. myself mm-hmm. for for failing that yeah. part. Um. Yeah. But then it's the way I react as yeah. well that that also matters. And, yeah. And yeah. I'm saying this because um, <coughs> like if she came to me and she told me that, um, I think it's just you know figuring out their options mm. because you know they're young. Yeah. So what would their options be? Um, because I have loved ones who have come to me and they're like you know pregnancy scares or something and they and they're quite young, um, and they ask for advice and and the first thing I do is I usually guard them on the wall so I smack them across the head because my thing whenever a loved one comes to me about sex is contraception mm. I because I'm not stupid kids and whoever are going to have sex that's just 
inevitable. Oh, that yeah. I believe that with all my heart. But um, my big thing, especially with with kids, mm. is is as soon as they tell me, I I especially my my younger um you know family members or friends or whatever, as soon as they tell me you know pregnancy scares, they already know the first thing I'm going to say. Yeah. Because I am very big on contraception. Yeah. Um, so I'm very. <laughs> So as soon as they tell me, I usually um, give them a bit of a flick on the ear because I'm just like, how many times have I told you <laughs> about contraception? I've given you websites. I've given you links. <laughs> I've given you – I've actually bought some um, for, you know. But but um, I, I give them that that lecture first and then I then go into, you know, your options. So, you know, having the kid, not having the kid, and then it, it the, the other uncomfortable thing is abortion. And I've noticed in our culture – that it's actually quite common oh, mm-hmm. for our culture to do that. And yeah. it's and again, it's no one talks about it because no one wants to mm. be, you know, have this image that, oh my gosh, th- th- they, their kid had a, you know, got pregnant. Yeah. Then they went and got rid of it. Yeah. Because <laughs> again, the judgment. So um, my thing is, what's your views on abortion then? I'm a hell no for abortion. I'm going to be honest. And I'm not just saying it because Jules is saying it. I am not for abortion if anyone is there's no judgments i've i've got many friends yeah. many loved ones who have and i've never judged them it's it's mm. their i'm not saying it's their body i'm saying it that's their decision yeah not mine um but yeah so we usually go into those sorts of discussions about uh, abortion <coughs> but i i just don't understand how um we know loved ones who have done it like mm-hmm. their parents have forced them to do it yep but i don't understand how that's how they've gotten to that as a solution. You know what I mean? Like, like how did you get from, from this to, no, you have to do that. But that, that, I, that ties into exactly <laughs> um, what I was saying with the sweeping it under the yes. rug. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's like, you know, um, because they don't want the shame and that, yeah. uh, the only way to not show people that you're pregnant is to get rid of them. Yeah. That, yeah. But it's going to come out anyway. Like we, <laughs> not really, because a lot of them we only found out about if you know some people that have gotten you know had abortions. Oh, we only found that out recently. That's actually yeah. true, uh, and that was only through like you know years later they've actually yeah. opened up about yes. it. Yes, but otherwise we wouldn't have known. Yeah, but that's the that was the solution back then. I knew yeah heaps of people I've parents would make their kids do yeah. that. Yeah, it's really sad because it's no wonder kids don't go to their parents. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um. It's it's already scary that they they've had sex, they've gotten pregnant, and then the reaction that they get is judgment, criticism, the the talk of being forced into doing an abortion. Yeah, um, that's got to change, man. Yeah. Like straight up, man. I don't know how people think that's that's worked. <laughs> um, because I've noticed people, you know, they fall into depression. They like, um, they they're not the same, mm. and they they just. It, it's really traumatic yeah. to go through, you know, all of those things at a young age. Um, so I think another reason <coughs> why sex is very uh, taboo to talk about mm. is because of the – yeah, yeah, I'm going to just it. say it. I was going to say just do it. <laughs> There's a lot of, um, you know, weird things that happen – Regarding sex in Polynesian community, and and I will, you know, uh, like, you know, everyone, I'm sorry if I offended you, but I find there's a a lot of, um, there's a lot of incest Mm -hmm. that is associated with sex. Mm -hmm. There's, um, you know, rape, Mm -hmm. sexual, like, you know, um, yeah, pretty much rape Mm -hmm. um, that is tied so heavily to sex that just normal sex is not is is even uncomfortable to talk about yeah and oh like okay i don't know where this started where (coughs) a brother and sister like i know they always talk about the sacred var between you know the sacredness between the the brother Brother and the sister sister. and the the, you know the distance that yeah um is appropriate between them and And i know and everything yeah and, and i know a lot of them say you know it's it's out of the you know, respect and the brother, um, you know, protects the sister and blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. I just feel like there's like going back, you know, if, if 
if we were to go back to where that all started, if, if that wasn't, you know how sometimes you, you, you say something, but you, you cover it with something else. Mm. So was it originally something like, you know, incest and then, you know, oh crap, they cover it with, <laughs> you know, oh, you know what, we'll, you know, um, you know, and then, you know, say, say for example, uh, one family, you know, brother and sister had a relationship, a sexual relationship. Another family sees that and they see that's wrong. So for them, instead of saying, you know what, <coughs> you, you do not have sex with your sister or your brother, they go, you need to have this sacred gap <laughs> between the brother and the sister. So you're not like, because I know a lot of people, you know, you can't have the brother and the sister alone in the same room. Mm -hmm. Even cousins as well. You can't have them in the same room alone. Yeah. And it's like, you know, to, to us kids, it's like, well, we're cousins or yeah. we're, we're siblings. Mm -hmm. Like that is far from our yeah. mind. But a lot of them, I don't know, I just think that ingrained in their minds, you know, the <coughs> there's going to, you know, I don't know, something's going to happen between the brother and the sister. It just made me think that it must have been some common thing yeah. for it to be such a, a like, you know, um, I don't know, like something that everyone sort of freaks out about. Yeah. I think that really that really frustrates me. <laughs> it really frustrates me because you know how um you know siblings and cousins and everything um you know the type of relationships that they have you can see how very close mm. certain I'm not saying um cuz I've seen I've seen cousins I've seen oh, you know, yeah, we've yeah, seen yeah. it all the time we, yeah. we do um but I think when when it's like when that stuff happens yeah that's them you yeah. know what I mean? Um, but when it's, you know, your own own family and stuff and then you get those sorts of accusations, like um, that really shits me. Yeah. Um, because it's like um, you don't want to teach us about sex. Yeah. You don't want to educate, educate us about sex. Um, but you want what you want to do is traumatise the children <laughs> to, to not want to be near their siblings or their cousins. Yeah. That's what shits me because, you know, those sorts of relationships, we have amazing relationships with our, our siblings mm. and our cousins. Like we, we argue and we fight, but you know we would hold it down for each other any day of the week. Yeah. Um. And to to be accused in like you know for something that's completely not like. even, <laughs> not even like an inkling of of in your mind that yeah. you've even considered. Um. Again, frustrates the crap out of me because first of all, educate the kid first. Yeah. Do your job as a parent first um, by, you know, explaining to them about the period, about contraception, about sex, about um, relationships, about marriage, about pregnancy, about everything. Um, that way you know, <laughs> you know, it's never going to be something that that's going to happen mm. within your children or your, you know, your nieces and nephews or yeah. whatever. If you've done that, you're all sweet. But yeah. don't, don't do nothing. <laughs> And then punish and them then, for it. And then scar the kids yeah. with that sort of thinking because it ruins relationships yeah. between siblings and cousins and then it, it makes it almost impossible for you to to want to see that, look at that person again because... <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got both, um, you know, ends of the spectrum that, that are so extreme. <coughs> I mean, you've got that yes. where, you know, people are being accused yep. of, like, having sexual relationships with their brothers or whatever, and it's far from it. Like, if anything, it, when I hear that, it's it disgusts me. It's, like, It I, physically yeah. pains me. So you, you can't be, like, you can't have a chat with your brother alone yeah. in the room without people thinking that, you know, oh, yeah. there might be. And then yet on the other side, then mm -hmm. you have people who actually do yep. get into relationships with their cousins or yep. their siblings and that. Um. I, you know, and that and the, we have a lot of stories where that <coughs> excuse me, some of that also are caused from like, you know. Past trauma. Yeah. But um, like, like, you know, uh, rape. <laughs> so we have a lot of that. Like, I, I, I know, like we, you know, there's a, um, a high level of that that, you know, happens in the Polynesian community. Uh, sexual abuse, you know, um, rape, and it's always from a family member. Yep. Um, yep. So you have that as well mm -hmm. on the other end. So you kind of like from both ends, you don't know, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you got the parents from, you know, who've seen that side mm -hmm. where there's sexual abuse from a family member, a cousin, a brother, yep. a father, whatever. <coughs> 
And so for them, in order to, you know, so to protect their children, they feel like, okay, brother and sister not allowed in the same okay. room. Cousins not allowed in the same room. You know what I yeah. mean? It's so like, I just feel like there's so much shit mm-hmm. around the topic of sex to, yeah. in, you know, our community yeah. that you just normal education like it would be difficult yeah it would (laughs) would be really difficult yeah yeah because sex on its own like we're not gonna beat around the bush here it is a beautiful thing um between you know if you you know whether you love each other or not it's usually like i'd prefer that with my kids (laughs) to be honest um (laughs) but if it's you know it's 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 one of those things that's a beautiful experience and um you, you know why people do it. You know, we're human beings where, you know, it's animalistic of us to have these these urges and whatever. Yeah. Um, that's it's, – it's, it's almost like it's been tainted by all the rubbish <laughs> around it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, sexual abuse, um, pregnancies, uh, you know, uh, incest, you know, yeah. everything around it that there's n- – there's no room for them to even focus on what sex actually is. Yeah. And it's it is a beautiful thing between people who love each other. Or, you know, if you don't again. Um, but um I think that's again, my main thing with this is you need to communicate this, yeah, especially 100%. to your kids. So they know I'm not saying like, you know, tell them sex is amazing, go and do it. Like I'm not saying that, but I mean you they're gonna, they're gonna figure that <laughs> they, out anyway. They are, and um, I, we're, you'd be stupid, like no offense, to think that yeah. your child is not going to have sex because yeah. it's almost <laughs> impossible. Oh uh, yeah, with, Man. with the access that they have today, <laughs> and what they see on TV, and what they hear, and what they listen to, and who but they talk to. Even before then, uh, and I'll tell you <coughs> now, like all those parents that thought, okay, because you you can see where their children are every day. You know, yeah. they're at home and, you know, yeah. and they think that they're not doing anything. <laughs> Believe me, I've seen so many kids at school yeah. doing it on the school grounds. Yep. They in the f- bathroom. Yeah, in the bathroom. Yeah. There's like little corners yeah. that they, whatever. I know a lot of my friends were like doing it when they were in their like 15, 16 yeah. or younger. Yeah. And um, <laughs> they will find somewhere. They will find somewhere. Yes. Don't think that you know they're because you're when they are home. Yeah, your, your eyes are on them. 20, you, then you're not <laughs> with them twenty four seven. Man, come on. Nah, nah. Those those teachers on the um yeah. <laughs> that monitor the yeah they should be playground. fired. <laughs> they should. They're probably just not even monitoring. They're just like eating their lunch <laughs> somewhere, just enjoying their lunch break. But you really, know, actually, someone at school <coughs> um actually successfully planted marijuana behind the school <gasps> no <laughs> yeah. got busted oh i'm pretty sure they busted ye- like busted him years later but it had already grown i was gonna say i was like what's the point like i know why but like but i mean like you, there's ways they like, are when Kids there's a will, will find a way man yeah, when there's Kids a will there's a way there is 100 <laughs> percent um but yeah you're right like i think the the pretty much the solution um, is to communicate, yeah. have that open communication with um, your kids because, mm-hmm. I mean, even for anybody like, you know, God forbid this will happen, but like if, you know, your, your child is sexually abused and that, having that line you where it's open to communicate, where they're comfortable to communicate with you, um, <coughs> at least they will feel comfortable also to come to you that they've been abused. Mm. Also that like... Because they they know about it, they know that's wrong. Yeah. Um. I know a lot of kids don't know what's happening to them because they don't they they've never ever um experienced or have the knowledge of sexual intercourse. So when things happen to their bodies, they don't know what's happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um. But yeah, we just gotta prepare our kids. Yeah. Like, like that's the job of yeah. us as parents is just to communicate yeah. and prepare them and we just need to break that that whole um mentality of you can't it's taboo oh yeah because if it was taboo they we wouldn't have so many teen pregnancies and um getting pregnant out of wedlock mm. and um all that jazz and just to be honest like when i when 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 someone's like you know people that you know you go to church with family and all that whenever they sort of act or um strict around around the topic of sex mm-hmm. i always feel like the, like the first thing that pops up in my mind is like well what dirty did you do <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what skeletons do you have <laughs> it's like your kid's 25 but you got married like when you know <laughs> i done the calculations <laughs> and <laughs> it's like, come on man like yeah. it's 
It's out there. We just need, yeah, we just need to break that cycle. Sex is sex. It's it's happening all over the world. So, yeah. God, I mean. Deal with it face on, man. Just talk to your kids, man. Talk to your kids. And if you, you're a kid out there who's experiencing, you know, sex or, or you know, you don't know anything or um, talk to someone, man. You're like, you got to. You can talk to someone. Yeah. Um, talk to a doctor. Yes. Ask the op- for options. Yeah. Um, it's someone you trust, like even if it's not your parents and, yeah. you know. Because it's, it's inevitable that you will <coughs> have sex. Like teenagers will have sex. Yeah. Teachers, teenagers will be curious about sex. Mm-hmm. They'll want to have sex. Um, and then when they do, they'll want to do it even more. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, at least sort of let them know that they can – do that, mm-hmm. but not fall pregnant. Yeah. Or do that, but you know, be protected. Yeah. Against illnesses as well. Yeah. Like, you know, what's the STIs? Yeah. Yeah. All that AIDS stuff. and stuff. So yeah. Um. So just yeah, accept yeah. that they will do it. Yeah. <laughs> but just prepare them to yeah. be protect them from yeah. yeah. Also, to any kids out there who's not ready for for sex, but they're getting pressured, uh, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Yeah. I actually um. I might uh, end this with uh, a bit of history. Bring it on. I, I've actually found this interesting. I don't think it's anything to do with like it, – it's it's to do with sex, but um, – Okay. Uh, so I came across this <coughs> story. Um, so it's apparently – so I'll base it around Samoa because we're someone. <laughs> um, like we're sick of you. you see, we know you're someone. <laughs> we're just saying. But um, it, was, it was just interesting. But um, the first encounter with – you, you know, any sort of Europeans uh, was in 1787. Um, and that was with, uh, I think they were French. Yep. So you're going from a community that only sees brown faces, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then all these white people come up. So uh, there were accounts that said um, that, you know, the fir- when people saw these white people, they thought they were kind of godly. Because mm-hmm. they've never ever seen that complexion before, and, and all that. And back then, every, <coughs> everyone was highly spiritual. Okay, everything was to do with like you know the gods and blah blah blah. So before the before the Europeans, um, there was a, a. I'm like this is I'm just going off sources here, but um, there were written accounts, and um, they sort of explored. Um, sex in in like you know around the in the Pacific Islands, um, and there was a defloration ceremony that used to happen. Mm-hmm. So what? Um, so the chief yep. would, um, how do I say it? So young girls mm-hmm. that were virgins were were given to the chiefs. And they'd have a defloration ceremony. So it's a ceremony where they have sex. Um, and it's, I don't know, there was something about having kids that were of royalty or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. back then chiefs were like, you know, the top dog sort of thing. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. So when the Bahamas <coughs> came, I don't know if you've seen a lot of – I've watched this on – there was a documentary that I watched on Netflix. Yeah. It was based, based on World War Two. Anyway, mm-hmm. so a lot of the accounts that – throughout the history of Europeans, um, you know, first encounter with, like, the islanders, I've noticed that there's a commonality in their, their first encounter, which is um, that they say Pacific Islander women threw themselves – at these Europeans. Okay. I don't know, like, I, I, <laughs> legit, there was a World War II, uh, I saw I saw that for myself. Because oh, okay, I watched, so it's actual facts. Yeah, it's, yeah. Okay, my bad, I was, oh, sorry, my bad. I fell into defence, man, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, same, when I watched it. So, um, anyway, there were a lot of written accounts over the centuries. Um, they actually... Um, the common thing is that all these Europeans say that Pacific Islander women would throw themselves at them. Mm-hmm. And that the other thing was that the the men were barbarians or they were barbaric mm-hmm. and the women were beautiful and they were, um, what's the word? <coughs> it was just something that they've never seen before. Like exotic and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, and then for them, they said that, 
Pacific Islander women would throw themselves at them. Anyway, so um, later some this oh, I forgot his name John something. <laughs> John Williams, I think he went back and he he went through all the accounts, and he was like something doesn't add up here. And then, um, as he in his further studies, uh, it came out that um, they were they didn't throw themselves at these Europeans. They made it out that way. I see, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it they so it wasn't also like they raped them either. But it was um, the women, like the elder generation, would offer the young girls, the virgins, to these balangis, mm. um, and like as a you know because they they viewed them as as godly. Yeah, and you know how they would offer them to chiefs because you know like royalty. Yeah, so that that's what they did. Mm-hmm. They gave um, the young, and they were young girls. They weren't women. They were girls. Um, give these girls to to these balangis. That that annoys me yeah. <laughs> because I'm a mum of a daughter. Like I'm not saying yeah. sons don't matter. I'm just saying as a mum of of a girl. Yeah, that is that is messed up. <laughs> and that and but that was the norm back then. Mm. But like you know, these girls they didn't have choices. They also didn't want to. Uh, oh. So apparently, uh, in some of the ceremonies, um. They had like I don't know if it was like a, a grandmother or something had to hold physically <gasps> hold the girl down while the oh. the chief or whoever um yeah uh, has sex with her. There's also this other thing um and so you know the the Samoan fales the yes. huts so I didn't know there was a say sec- the some sort of uh super like uh what's the word there's a uh, there's a, a special meaning to the blinds. Okay. So when the blind, so apparently when the blinds are down, there's only two reasons for it. That's for one is the defloration ceremony, and the second one is for when the chiefs have a meeting with the 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 spirits. Mm-hmm. So uh, what is fongo ma aiku? Oh. Yeah. Um. So when you know they can't think of a you know a, any solution, they used to. You know, talk to the spirits. Talk to the spirits. So when the blinds are down, it opens that area up for um, the spirits to enter. Mm-hmm. So even like apparently even in storms, it's dangerous to have all your blinds down. You have to have at least one down. I don't know if they still do that now, <coughs> but back then you always have to have one, at least one um, blind up. Every okay. every other one's down, but one has got to is going to be up because if they're all down, it's it's dangerous because you're now open to the spirit world kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, so just thinking about that, so, um, you know, having the blinds down, spirits, and then f- looking at the defloration. Two, yeah. Yeah. Two totally opposite things. Yeah. But I I think back then, um, you know, Psalm 1's sex was <laughs> – uh, sex was like a link to, you know, the spirit world as well. Like there was something special about it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, especially when you're having your defloration ceremony in a in a environment where you know you've got all the blinds down, you're open to the spirit world. I don't know um, what that meaning is, but uh, yeah. So um, it explains why they would throw these girls to those guys, to the Europeans who they viewed as as, as godly. Okay, but um, I understand. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, I don't know. I just when you there's a there's a reason why I always look back at history to sort of explain why, like to How make me here. understand why. Yeah, why we have. Um, like these taboo topics and all that. And I don't know, I just like just looking looking at that and then sort of like now, <laughs> like <coughs> back then it was almost like virgins, you know, the whole sacrifice, the virgins and, and you know, the, the, the spirit world, whatever, to please the gods, um, you know, for the benefit of the village, I guess. Mm. Um, but it was almost like that. That was the way of life back then that after um, 
after the Christians, after the missionaries came and said that that's, you know, that was, that's wrong. Mm. So now there's this, you know, sort of uh, shame. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I feel like that's also linked to why, you know, there's, it's so messed up, this whole yeah. topic of sex in the, in the, in the, you know, Pacific community. Mm. Uh, it's just miscommunication, man. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But I, I, I understand what you're saying because it's just, it, it is a very difficult thing to talk about. Mm. Um, but you got to do it. <laughs> That's just what I believe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I, I feel like if, if, um, if we do what we're supposed to do as parents, our kids should be okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how would you, how would you have that conversation? To her about sex? Yeah. Would you go graphic? <coughs> um, I'm <laughs> my my daughter and I are very open. Um, so it's it's to me it's what you and your relationship with your child is. I already know my kid and I have. I know she's gonna hate me when she's a teenager because that's a given. Um, <laughs> I don't know any teenager who's like, oh, I freaking love my mom. She's the best. Um, but I already know that uh, she knows that I will always be there regardless of what happens. Mm. When when discussing the topic of sex, I don't think I'm going to, um, what's it called? Sugarcoat things. Mm. Um, because when you sugarcoat things, it sends the kid mixed signals um, yeah. and mixed messages. And then th- to me, they just get even more confused than when they were at the beginning of the conversation. Um, but I would sit her down and I would explain to her, to be honest, I would probably explain to her when she got her first period. Um, because to me, that is a, a huge for me, a a huge monumental moment in her life um, that's beginning, that's going to start the the actual, what's it called, journey that she's going to have moving forward from this. Yeah. Um, So she's going to go, to me, she's going to go from a young girl to a young lady. Yeah. Um, (coughs) I would probably sit her down um, with her gift box and like (laughs) her period box and everything (laughs) um, and then be like, okay, so this we're celebrating, but I'm also going to traumatize you. Um, (laughs) So I'd give her (laughs) get the popcorn out. Um, So I'd give her this, 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 uh, you know, the, the period box and explain to her, you know, you're not dying. Mm. Um, This is completely normal. Um, Again, I would hope to do it before she gets her period. So she's not surprised. Yeah. Um, but it depends. I, I could change my mind when, you know, in 10 years' time, it could be different. Yeah. Um, so whether I start off with the period talk first and then um, she gets it and then I can explain to her after, you know, um, your body's changing for this reason. Yeah. Um, <coughs> you're going to start feeling things, um, feeling, you know, different urges that you've never felt before. Um, and then I'd probably get into that that topic of sex but I would do it in a way where I'd ask her because I'm very big on um, asking what she's comfortable with. Mm. So I would do it so that I'd be like, you know, do you want my mum to keep going or do you want to give it a bit of a break? Or yeah. It honestly depends on on the parent and their relationship with, with their kids. So I would I would do it to their pace yeah. and ask them when they're ready to pick it back up where we left off. Yeah. Um, and then <coughs> as far as graphics, again, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, Parts go into parts. Um, I'll, I'll probably I wouldn't say it that blunt, but I will explain to her, you know, the different areas of of a, a woman and a man, and what happens mm. when you know. I'm I'm not gonna say love because I don't want her to <coughs> feel pressured, or um because I feel like when you're that strict, we're just like you can only do it with someone you love. Like the kid's gonna do it with whoever they're gonna do it yeah. with, um, and they're gonna think at the time that it's love. And then they'll realize later, oh crap, it wasn't love. <laughs> it was just it was just lust or hormones or whatever. <coughs> but I think yeah, I would explain it to based on her what she's comfortable with. Mm. And then um, as far as contraception, I'm really nervous to to uh, consider contra- contraception because as a parent, you don't know what the right thing to do is with anything. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether it's 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 all right for me to put her on contraception if. Because I would ask her if she would – you still want to ha- give them that um, choice because um, it's their body. Yeah. So you still want to give them that option. But at the same time, you I don't want to raise grandkids at a young age. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I know I'm going to love my grandkids, but I also don't want to raise a young grandchild and raise a teenager at the same time because yeah. I would not know where to begin. Yeah. Um. So I would – it's just I would try so hard to find the balance um, between, you know – what she's comfortable with and if she's 
if she told me I, I am considering having sex, then I'd be like, look, this is, these are your options. Yeah. I'm sure you don't want to be a mum at, you know, 16 or whatever. Mm. Um, this is the time. And then we'd talk, to be honest, I would talk to uh, a medical professional um, and, and get their options on what's good for the child. Yeah. Um, with her permission, of course. I yeah. don't want to do anything that she's not comfortable with or she's not ready for. Or, um, but I think that's just for now. I don't know because she's still four. <laughs> I've still got ages to write it down and consider and talk about and um, put in my diary because I write a lot of crap in my diary. <laughs> See, I'm having I'm having um, a different issue at the moment. See, I don't know how young you can have that conversation. Yeah, because <coughs> um, I had no idea um, because you know I only know from my own experience because yeah. you know we're girls. We're girls. Yeah, and um, yeah, f- well, so. I'm gonna put my expose my poor son. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> but he's like at that age where he's he doesn't know anything about you yeah. know um um sex. He yeah, does, he's just at curious. that age. No, he's not. Like I don't think he's even curious. But like but within his own body, he's starting to um feel sensations down okay. there. Okay. You know, yeah. um, and he like he'll do something, and to me straight away my reflex is just <laughs> <laughs> the sound warning us is like no, yeah. stop that, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, but I didn't like, f- and I'll admit that I'm, I was wrong in doing that. Yeah, but I, I just didn't click. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then um, my partner turned around and he goes, "Don't ever do that again." And I was like, "What do you mean? He's you know he's being <coughs> he's doing weird like he's." Being rude. Yeah. And then um, he goes, no, he doesn't know anything. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. But like, you know, just the act of it. Like, yeah. You know, because it was an automatic thing. Yes. It was to us, anytime you do, like for us, even if you were to, I got a hiding for being on all fours, like, like in a doggy position. Yeah. And uh, to me, I was a little kid. I didn't even yeah. know what that was. Yeah. But I got smashed like you're in, yeah. for Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, like. So he said to me automatically, he did something where he was like, you know, grinding on something. Yeah. And I just, I smacked him. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And then I got told off for it. Yeah. I felt really bad. But yeah. Um, so he was saying like, you know, for a boy, and I didn't understand this either because I'm a girl and he goes, uh, for a boy, like at a young age, you get these sensations down there Mm -hmm. and they don't know what it is, but all they know is that it feels good. Yeah. So they will like, you know, start sort of, you know, uh, grinding on things Mm. because they know that that feels good. Yeah. Um, But yeah. And I was like, but like, you know, to me, (coughs) if he's doing that, I feel like he knows about sex and he goes, no, no, no. Yeah. (laughs) We like, cause you know, he goes, it's normal. Yeah. He doesn't know anything about sex. He just knows that that feels good. Yes. Okay. And um. And then yeah. So now I'm like, so what? Do we have to have that conversation with him now? Yeah. And yeah. Um. But he's spoken to him about, you know, that yes, like he he. So he sat him down, acknowledged that you know he knows that that those sort of things feel good. Yeah. But um, you know, there's certain things that you can and can't do. Okay. And um. Yeah, so he hasn't had the full sex talk, but mm-hmm. he's just saying that you know you do not you know grind on this. You yeah, know, if 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 you want to like um, just do it in your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, it's a, like he doesn't want to scare him off to not do it. Yeah, because then he'll try you know undercover do it like you know like what we're scared of is that you know if. Like he has a friend over or whatever, he might start, you know, okay. wanting to. I don't know, get someone else to like rub on somebody or okay. something like that. Yeah. you know what I mean. But um, so he's saying it's okay, but don't you know do it in the room. Um, you're not allowed to you know touch anybody else's parts. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so he's had that conversation okay. with him already. Cool, <laughs> and he's only six. I know, I know. So that's, that's why scary. I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm like, so like. It's so hard because, you know, even we can sit here and say, you know, it, it's important to have a community, you know, to be communicating with your, your kids and blah, blah, blah. But we also still subconsciously have, yes. sta- you know, those standards or I'll have this conversation when they're eight years old or yeah. blah, blah, blah. 
But until I saw that, mm-hmm. I didn't know I had to have it straight away. Yeah. Like that I had to have that conversation, like, you know, recent. Yeah. Recent, like, you know, now. Yeah. <laughs> and he's only six. But, mm. like, I, to me, I was teary that I was like, oh, maybe, you know, because I don't have to have the period talk. <laughs> yes. So I'll, you know. You've got a few more years before few more even years. considering that stuff. Yeah. But oh, then when okay. that happened, I was like, I never knew that. And I didn't then, know that either. Yeah. And then Rob was saying it's normal for boys to feel that. Cause, okay. You know, and then I was like, oh. Shit, my bad. Like, sorry <laughs> for know. sorry for smacking you. <laughs> it's you just have one side of me <laughs> that you love. <laughs> nah, that's um, he knows. He knows. But yeah, like it's hard. It's really hard. It Parenting really is. is very hard. Yeah. We um, say it in most of our episodes. To be quite honest, <laughs> man, there's no right or wrong, but we all like communication yes. is important. Yeah. Really important. But yeah, I think you just. You, you gotta know your own kid. Yeah, you gotta know your kid. Yeah, and then you'll know when to yeah. have that. And if you have any stories as well, like please tell us, like you know how you approached your kids and how they approached you, yeah. or any advice you could give us, because oh, we're yes, we're still really we're not. Well, you know what? We're young mums, <laughs> um, so so we'd love all the advice we could get because it's it's just gets harder. <laughs> I know. I know. I I honestly don't know how we. You know our. Um, Parents have fitting eight kids. I had to know either. I'm just like, I can't even. <laughs> Maybe that talk will actually reduce the numbers <laughs> of uh, <laughs> of children we have, you know. <laughs> just slightly, but, you know, I wouldn't mind. I just, we just love our people anyway, so. But, yes, that was our topic today, guys. Um, I hope you're all well. Yeah. Um, I hope, you know. You're all safe. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so do you have anything else to add, Kaz? No, I'm All good. Right. Well, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Um, I usually don't end it, so I'm just oh. going <laughs> to sit here staring at the camera. Um, <laughs> see you in the next episode. See you in the next episode.